Hi, I'm Jeff Everhart, a developer advocate with WP Engine. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, when should I use Headless WordPress? If you're confused about what Headless WordPress is, or new to this style of architecture, be sure to reference the previous video in this series for a brief overview. To get started, we'll talk about some common reasons to use Headless WordPress. One of the first things we'll dive into is the idea of improved performance or perceived performance. Whenever developers consider making the switch from traditional WordPress to headless WordPress, the idea of improved performance and perceived performance are commonly cited benefits. Now, there are several methods that we can deploy using headless WordPress to achieve either improved performance or perceived performance benefits for our users. The first of which we'll discuss is code splitting. Code splitting is a tactic deployed by many front-end JavaScript frameworks that allows you to limit the amount of code that you're shipping to a user's browser to render any one page, route, or component. The goal of code splitting, whether route-based or component-based, is to ship less code to the browser. Less code being shipped to the browser means less time spent downloading it or parsing and executing JavaScript, all of which means that your sites are going to load faster on mobile devices or devices that run over less powerful networks. Another possible perceived performance benefit that you can get by adopting a headless architecture is faster page transitions, depending on what is supported by your chosen front-end framework. Many front-end frameworks support either client-side routing or what's called hybrid routing, meaning that each time a user requests a new page from your app, only the data that is needed to display that page is downloaded and rendered in the user's browser. Now, while there may not be an actual performance benefit to this, especially if you are using a traditional WordPress site that employs heavy page casting, it's typical that users will perceive a performance benefit here because any of their in intra-site navigations don't necessarily incur the full page refresh or full browser refresh that would happen using a traditional WordPress site. A third key performance benefit is improved core web vitals. Now, Core Web Vitals are a subset of Web Vitals that have been prioritized by Google and that should be measured across all sites and that are easily distinguishable in the wild. These Core Web Vitals include things like first contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, and first input delay. All of these have really practical implications to how usable your sites are on mobile devices and across devices that are connecting over slower networks. When using traditional WordPress themes, it can be difficult to achieve healthy scores on Web Vitals out of the box without investing significant development time in customizing your themes and plugins. However, some of the front-end frameworks that people typically use to create headless WordPress sites come out of the box prepared to address some of these core challenges related to core web vitals. One last thing we'll talk about in the improved performance bucket is the idea that we get total rendering control with headless sites. While this video isn't long enough to dig into all of these different rendering methods uh, on their own, know that WordPress uses, traditional WordPress uses something called server-side rendering, which means that every time a browser makes a request to the server, the server processes that request and then returns HTML to the user. It's possible to deploy caching in front of that to help speed that process up, but it doesn't give us, a, as developers, flexibility in choosing how we want to solve this problem. Now, what Headless WordPress offers us is the ability to have total control over how our site is rendered, which means that if we want to do server-side rendering, we can do that. We can also imply client-side rendering or hybrid rendering, which I mentioned earlier in the routing, or even static site generation, where we build our entire site as a set of static HTML files that get served up to the user. Another common reason to use headless WordPress, as cited by lots of developers making that choice, is to achieve an improved developer experience. Now this can be a very opinionated point and will obviously differ based on the preferences and skills of your existing pool of developers. But with the rise in Jamstack architectures and the increased level of JavaScript activity across the web development ecosystem, we're seeing more and more developers make this point. So one of the things that Headless and by extension, the application of JavaScript frameworks to development in the WordPress world affords us is the idea that we can now develop uh, through a component based architecture. One of the common threads across many of the front-end frameworks is that we see that the J JavaScript component becomes the base level of development across the stack. 
So we develop in components, we write components, and we tend to think in components as we assemble the larger web pages that might become our site or application. While there are certainly ways to achieve this in a traditional sense with WordPress using PHP templates or partials, this is certainly a core concept that is baked into pretty much every JavaScript framework that you're going to work with. In addition to that, we can also leverage the JavaScript ecosystem. One of the best things about traditional WordPress is the diversity of its plugin and theme ecosystem, which allows developers to pull in components to suit a particular need very quickly. In the same way that we can do that in traditional WordPress with plugins and themes, we can do that in headless using JavaScript components. If we need a particular map or widget for say Google Maps, there's more than likely a package created for all of the popular front end frameworks that we can use. And one of the caveats here is that not all of the plugins that we use uh, in a traditional WordPress sense are going to work well in a headless environment. So this does mean that we as developers have to make some decisions about what we want to use from which environment and how best to achieve the experiences that we're looking to create for our clients. One of the most important reasons cited behind making the shift to headless is the idea that we gain some flexibility in data sourcing around WordPress and our content management system. One of the things that we like to say is that WordPress, and in particular headless WordPress, allows you to write once and then publish everywhere. WordPress comes out of the box with a very robust REST API, but using plugins like WP GraphQL, you can also create powerful GraphQL APIs that allow you to consume your content across multiple different clients. So this means that you could have a front-end facing web application created with a front-end JavaScript framework like React, Vue, or Svelte. You could also have uh, a WordPress API powering iOS or Android applications, or really sophisticated Internet of Things kiosks. Anything that can be hooked up to the internet and has the ability to get data over HTTP requests using either REST or GraphQL is a potential client for your new WordPress site. In addition, Headless WordPress also gives developers a lot of flexibility in how they source data from third parties. Now, what this means is that if we want to take the content stored in our content management system and combine that with data from another third party API, we have a lot of flexibility in how we approach that. Now, to do that in a traditional WordPress sense, we would have had to write some PHP code to do that, and perhaps we would have exposed that additional data over a custom REST API endpoint or stored it in the database as a custom post type. All of those options are still viable for us in Headless, but because we also have an additional front-end application in many cases, we also have some flexibility in where we want to place that data source and code. So it lets us as developers make additional choices around how and where we want our code to interact with these third-party APIs and gives us the flexibility to do so in a clean way. In addition to that, WordPress has gotten a common wrap as blogging software, but under the hood, it's also a super powerful content management system with the ability to create custom post types, uh, custom meta tags, custom hierarchies, taxonomies, and gives the developer a lot of flexibility in how they structure their data. And while all of those things are definitely possible in traditional WordPress, some of the tools that are being created for Headless make that process a whole lot easier. In the past, creating those custom post types and those custom taxonomies either required a slew of additional plugins or writing some custom PHP code to do that as a part of your own custom plugin. But tools like Atlas Content Modeler, which is developed specifically for data modeling around Headless sites, allows us to collapse some of that functionality into a single tool that helps you create those custom post types and those complex data models, but also immediately makes them available over REST APIs and GraphQL. The final common reason we might want to consider headless WordPress is that it provides some increased security benefits. Over the years, traditional WordPress has gotten what is perhaps an unfair, bad reputation for bad security practices. However, one of the benefits of this decoupled approach is that we gain some amount of system resiliency and some amount of increased security by hiding our WordPress instance from the public view. One of the first points to discuss here is the idea that headless WordPress provides a reduced surface area for attackers. Since the backend WordPress instance isn't accessible publicly in most headless deployments, it can provide you with some additional security benefit. 
What this means is that since hackers or bad actors don't know necessarily that you're using WordPress, it makes it more difficult for them to target your backend CMS. And in the same way that it makes it harder for hackers to tell that you're using WordPress, just the nature of having decoupled applications also gives you an additional layer, layer of system resiliency. If you were to experience an attack, say for example like a DDoS attack, which is a distributed denial of service attack, it's possible that the traffic that's sent to your application with malicious intent might only take down your front-end application, while still leaving your back-end CMS available for updates and for you as an administrator to get in there and, and make any modifications that are necessary. While there is no guarantee that you won't experience a total outage in any one of these cases, some of the patterns that are encouraged by particular front-end frameworks, like static site generation, for example, help to mitigate load across the system. Because you've already pre-rendered all of your assets and all that your web server is doing is grabbing an HTML file that corresponds to a request and sending that back to the user, the processing time that is associated with each request is lowered and thus the load across your system is lessened throughout the duration of that attack. While there are a lot of reasons to consider using headless WordPress, there are also some very clear indicators that a traditional WordPress setup is still the best for you or your client. So let's talk about some of those reasons in depth. One of the most important indicators around when it might be best to stick with a traditional WordPress deployment is when you, your developers, or your clients will need to make visual modifications to the site using things like plugins, themes, custom blocks, or full site editing capabilities. One of the reasons that WordPress has grown so dominant in the CMS marketplace is that it offers the idea of no code or low code development to a really large subset of users. However, what that means in practice for headless sites is that things like custom plugins, blocks, full site editing modifications may not display correctly out of the box without a lot of additional work. So one of the best indicators of when it's in your best interest to stick with a traditional WordPress deployment is when you, your developers, or your clients will will need to or foresee the need to in the future make visual modifications to the site using any one of those traditional WordPress tools. As a second indicator, sometimes the overall timeline for a project or a project's budget can have implications into what type of deployment you or your agency can provide. While there are a lot of benefits to adopting a headless WordPress architecture, just the nature of decoupled applications means that we're adding in additional complexity. While platforms like WP Engine's Atlas attempt to lower that complexity, it does not in any case reduce it to zero. Oftentimes, project timeline and overall cost will be evaluated against some of the key benefits that a headless approach can provide. And often, it may not be in everyone's best interest to make those trade-offs. In this case, it's likely that a traditional WordPress deployment is going to be best for you. Lastly, it's important to recognize the skills that are required to deliver a headless site or application are different than those required to deliver many traditional WordPress products. Again, while WordPress offers the benefit of low code or no code development and things like full site editing, which is a new feature being released to WordPress core, attempt to offer non-technical users a much greater depth of customization and control Headless exists on the opposite end of the spectrum, where you will definitely need developers skilled in certain types of technologies to deliver those experiences, depending on which channel you intend to publish to. If you're creating a front-end website using a front-end framework like Vue, Svelte, or React, then in most cases you're going to need a developer with intermediate to advanced understanding of JavaScript, and perhaps also intermediate to advanced understanding of things like the PHP REST API, or WP GraphQL, depending on how much you will need to customize uh, for your particular deployment. So as you're evaluating new projects and deciding whether or not you want to go with a headless or a traditional approach, thinking about the skill level and the preferences of your developers or you or your agency is going to be a really important indicator of which path is going to be best for you. So throughout this video, we've discussed a lot of potential reasons why headless might be a good approach in certain cases.
but also then talked about some of the reasons why we might consider sticking with traditional WordPress. So before we leave, I just wanted to wrap up and summarize a couple of those reasons for you here. When compared to traditional WordPress deployments, headless deployments have some of the following benefits. They can offer improved performance and perceived performance benefits to your users. Depending on the preferences of your developers, they can offer an improved developer experience around things like component-based architectures. They can also act as a repository for complex data types over REST APIs or GraphQL. And in some cases, they can also provide you additional security benefits. On the other hand, it's also important to consider other factors around when a traditional WordPress installation might still be best. If you or your client expect to take advantage of the traditional affordances like plugins, full site editing capabilities, or page builders, then a traditional deployment might be best for you. If the overall timeline, cost, or complexity of a headless deployment isn't a trade-off that you or your client are willing to make as a part of the development process, or if you have an existing pool of developers or you yourself are already skilled in the technologies to deliver traditional WordPress experiences at a high level, it may not be worth pursuing a headless deployment. At the end of the day, one of the reasons that WordPress has gained such widespread popularity is because it offers a ton of choices for developers across the spectrum. And that is how we see headless WordPress fitting into this ecosystem, by offering developers just another choice in how they want to create and deliver experiences for their users. Thanks for watching.